All right. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Brian from K Hux Nation, and in today's episode, we are going over the brand new units that came out for the summer event part two. Uh, now, first of all, I want to apologize for not being able to make this video uh, a few days ago when it first came out. Uh, I did just get a brand new job and I have been working the last few days and today was finally my first day off. <laughs> so um, I, I, I basically haven't really had time to make any videos uh, and that will probably end up being a somewhat similar case in the future as well. Um, I'm still trying to get adjusted to it so hopefully when I get more adjusted to my new job uh, I can start figuring out when to make how to make videos faster and more on time um, but that's just something I have to work out on my own but I did just want to let you guys know at the very least that yes I did get a new job okay so it's possible that updates might be a little bit delayed at times okay so just putting that out there but other than that, I really, I've been really wanting to talk about the new units uh, from this event, especially Summer Cleo, because oh my god, Summer Cleo can be absolutely nuts in the right context, okay? Well, let's just go ahead and uh, talk about them before I go into it. So, first of all, Summer Cleo is a Firestar Light uh, Bow and Arrow unit. Um, by the way, I will say that I absolutely love the picture. I wasn't expecting Cleo's <laughs> beach outfit to look absolutely stunning. Um, even the, po the pose she makes too just makes it go... Just naturally sparks that inner... Like... Oh, what's it called? Predator? <laughs> like you can't help but want to like go out and like, you know, hit on her type of thing. She looks cute. I'm not going to go further than that. Anyways, her skills. First uh, activated ability is Parasol Shot. Deals light damage to and inflicts paralysis on the target and nearby enemies. And fires extra shots equal to the number of buffs the user has. A maximum of four additional shots can be fired. This is actually... This is honestly not very... I wouldn't say like very good. It's not like ridiculous. But it's, it's actually really decent. The fact that the first shot alone already can paralyze things and nearby enemies so it has both a single target and a bit of an aoe burst too on top of the fact that the more buffs you have you can shoot more shots too basically being able to cast a wider net uh to be able to paralyze like a whole mob of enemies if you wanted to that can like that has potential to be absolutely nutty like really nutty uh it, it, it's kind of reliant on your composition your team composition of course to make sure you can actually pull that off successfully uh, but it's still under the right context that can be absolutely nutty um the second ability though and this is the one that honestly catches my my attention the most about summer cleo which is what the pro is going to be the primary reason why i think she's really good is uh it's tropical breeze for 10 seconds increases the user and nearby ally strength by five percent critical rate by three percent and skill damage by 10 percent and skill gauge fill rate by 10 percent okay now it's that last one that really gets me uh the skill gauge fill rate it you know it's kind of coincidental because i was just thinking within the last couple weeks or so how there's really not a, a lot of units or even worm prints in the game that provide any sort of uh, haste type of ability at all whatsoever. Um, or skill haste, okay? Type of abilities. So, I... I was trying to find as many of them as possible, and there's really not that many at all whatsoever. Um, which is kind of unfortunate, because skill haste, I feel... I like if if I were to categorize which of the like the top mechanics in the game I think are the best, I would put skill haste up there. I'd put uh, skill haste, uh, skill haste, bleeding, and uh, what's it called? Uh, fire rate increase like increase in uh, attack rate, like up there, and maybe maybe critical rate as well. I feel like critical rate might be like A tier, whereas those first three are like S tier in my opinion. Okay. So, bleeding, just because bleeding can affect anybody, uh, it's not an ailment, so it can't be resisted yet, anyways, at this point in time. 
um, attack, increasing attack rate, because that means you can do more damage, which it just it helps everything else that you can potentially do. It means more damage, you refill your skills faster. Um, if you're doing a critical uh, or an ailment type strategy, it increases the number of chances that those can go off. Um, and as well as skill haste as well, just because uh, especially for very ability reliance characters, it just means you get to go make them go off even faster. Okay. And depending on the abilities too, it can help uh, trigger a snowballing effect depending on your team. So amongst all the mechanic uh, ability mechanics in the game, I would label those three as like S tier and then I'll put like critical rate, uh, increasing critical rate as like A tier, just because uh, it kind of relies on the others a little bit to make that more reliable but anyways the fact that it increases skill rate to me though is really what makes tropical breeze like really good the rest are still pretty good too I like the the strength increase uh critical rate increase and damage increase those are still good on their own too but the skill gauge rate is really what like catches my attention and it also helps as well that her co-ability when you're doing like co-op and stuff uh, also provides a plus 15% skill haste too, which is what we were just talking about. So that just helps on top of that. Um, her passive abilities is paralysis equals haste plus 10%, increases skill gauge fill rate by 10% for 20 seconds upon successfully paralyzing an enemy. After activating this ability would not activate again for five seconds. Now this is honestly not too bad because it, it links exactly with her first ability of uh, the parasol shot where the more buffs you have the more arrows you can shoot out to paralyze more people at once so that's honestly not too bad that's that means you're going to be getting a like skill haste like a lot assuming that the enemy can be paralyzed in the first place and that's going to be the key factor about summer cleo uh is the fact that she's only going to be really good against enemies that can actually be paralyzed against enemies that cannot be paralyzed you won't really be able to use her that well just because most of her kit is kind of going to be completely neutered and unusable just because they kind of rely on the enemy being paralyzed so you gotta be careful with that but under the right situations against the right types of enemies she can be absolutely crazy um so not like i'm pretty happy about it so far as well as the fact that she also has a 100% curse resistance and she does 30% extra damage against paralyzed enemies, which is also, again, really good. Um, so overall, I'm really happy about Summer Cleo. She's, she sounds like she could be really good. One of those like situational units that like you might not always be able to use her, but when you do, <laughs> oh, oh man, you know you're going to go to town with her. Uh, that's like, that's where she's at. Uh, anyways, next up is Summer Verica. Now, I'm honestly very disappointed about Sim uh, Summer Verica because we finally got another healing unit, but she's honestly not very good in my opinion. Um, I still have yet to make my video going over what I believe to be the best healing unit in the game. Um, and spoiler alert, in my opinion, the best healing unit in the game is a four-star unit. It's a four-star unit. <laughs> Um, but yeah, Summer Verica is very disappointing for me. Uh, she's a five star, uh, dark, uh, staff unit. Okay. Healing unit. Her first ability is called Everlasting Summer. Restores HP to all allies and removes blindness, then continues healing over the next 15 seconds. This, honestly, is kind of a fairly standard ability. Like I said before, even a, like quite a few four star units have this exact same ability, different name, but does almost the exact same thing. Um, so this isn't really anything special to Summer Verica her, on her own. Uh, second ability, Moment of Passion. Grants all teammates a buff, which restores their HP by 5% of damage inflicted for 30 seconds. When Everlasting Summer is not available for use, the gauge for the skill will fill gradually. Abilities that increase skill gauge fill rate will not affect this skill. Now, I have kind of an issue with Moment of Passion. Just because of the fact that, uh... It's... I feel like, I feel like five, only, only restoring 5% of damage is not enough, in my opinion. I feel like it's a very low... 
and because of that it's almost it's almost like not even worth using because the amount of hp that you're doing or like that that will be recovered is not a very lot um now over the course of 30 seconds it might sound a lot but the fact is that if you're gonna be in the middle of a battle 30 seconds is a long time and it's possible you might be taking damage during those 30 seconds and uh five percent is just gonna, gonna be nowhere near high enough to actually make it like substantially reliable enough that you could actually like maybe uh rely on that health recovery often enough so in my opinion just that alone it's not very good there's there's many other uh killing abilities in the game in my opinion that are probably way better than moment of passion um it also doesn't help that the skill gate you can't increase the skill gauge fill rate for moment of passion 2 after using everlasting summer um which you will probably use off cooldown almost immediately once you obtain it so the fact you can't increase the moment of the how often you can get moment of passion to me it just it just makes the ability kind of really bad in my opinion um if it wasn't for that one like line of text there uh and you were in it if you were able to increase the skill gauge rate skill rate then maybe it might be kind of half decent um but because that is there it's kind of like it's not very good in my opinion um her co-ability has the recovery potency of plus 20 percent i believe this is the highest in the game so far don't quote me on that just yet uh, if there is something higher, go ahead and let me know in the comment section down below. I'm constantly learning new things, um, but I feel like I'm kind of more or less at the point where I more or less understand uh, the majority of the game. Alright, but I believe this is the highest recovery potency in the game so far. Because uh, I think the highest I've seen was like 13 or 17% or something like that. Something along those lines. Uh, her passive ability, full HP equals healing at 20 per plus 20%. Again, I believe this is the highest. The problem I have about the passive, though, is the fact that it has to be at full HP. I never liked abilities uh, that only trigger when you have full HP, just because they're very, like, a, they have kind of like a very glass cannon type feel. As soon as you take a speck of damage, you no longer get the ability, which in my eyes is kind of... It's kind of... I don't know risky to use i guess to say it's it's no no not risky it's a kind of unreliable that's probably a better word to talk, to talk about it it's kind of unreliable to actually use consistently um that's the issue i have with those type of abilities of course she has blindness resistant uh 100 kind of standard uh and then at base she has a recovery potency of plus 13 percent so at the very least at base that's not too bad that she gives 13 percent and then when you are at full hp it bumps up to 20 percent so at the very least that's not too bad oh my god my dog <laughs> my dog's going nuts all right so next up let me close the door real quick all right so next up we have pop star siren uh, it's a five star light dragon uh, we just got the water version of her last event uh, and then this is her you know taking the stage and all that all that good stuff okay whatever uh, overall though i think pop star uh, sirens actually pretty good uh, she kind of does stuff that other units and dragons do but better in some instances okay so uh her skill is invigorating harmony increases the entire team's strength and defense by 20 percent for 20 seconds which is kind of nuts that's a huge amount uh as far as i can tell i don't think there's many other abilities that increase strength and defense by that huge of amount so 20 percent for 20 seconds and 20 seconds is quite a long time within a battle that's honestly really good on like on its own it increases their energy levels by three stages which is kind of nuts because there's already a ton of uh abilities in the game as of right now that already provide like energy levels so the fact that it does it by three stages is like holy crap <laughs> then you could basically like uh it's like right before you transform into pop star siren into dragon form you could like uh reach level five 
boost up the next ability, transform into Popstar Siren, use the ability, buff everybody, and you get plus three energy. So by the time you de-transform and you use like maybe one or two abilities throughout your team, and you can uh, use the next stage uh, at level five as well, again, within like just seconds of, of de-transforming. To me, that's kind of nuts. On top of having plus 20% strength and defense, like that, you have very high burst potential uh with just that like first line alone which is which is absolutely nuts um let's see it is possible to charge your skills gauge by attacking and use it up to twice during one shape shift what like are you kidding me so you're saying so <laughs> what you're saying is you could potentially use this ability twice and not only okay increase the entire team's strength and defense by 20 percent for 20 seconds twice okay so up to if i understand it right up to 40 percent for 40 seconds roughly what okay but you automatically automatically buff out your entire team's energy levels up to five immediately by the time you detransform. that's crazy that's absolutely crazy again just makes the burst potential for absolutely nuts um and then just stand it just lists the typical when the energy level reaches five thing it it gets enhanced the next move gets enhanced her passive ability uh if you're equipped to a light unit increases your strength by 40 percent um that's really good units that tend to have that uh percentage 40 percent or higher tend to be some of the best to use uh so the fact that like she's at 40 percent she can use her shapeshift ability up to two times within one shapeshift and the fact that it buffs your entire team and energizes the entire team a huge amount she's absolutely crazy i i would quite or literally probably rate pop star siren as probably like an s tier dragon right now for light units um she's got to be as of right now, at least one of the best uh, dragons you could potentially have on a unit, at least for a, a light unit. Okay, so if you ever get her, I highly recommend you equip her. She, in my mind, she's currently one of the best. So very good as of right now. Her last passive ability is Exhilaration. If the user is attuned to light, increases shape shift time for the entire team by three seconds. The team's shape shift time can only be increased by a maximum of five seconds through this ability. That's kind of like a like an extra uh, icing on the cake type of ability. Don't really need it, but it's nice to have. Okay, it's it's along those lines. Uh, I'm not gonna complain about it. But overall, she I wouldn't say she's broken, but she's ridiculous. She's very OP as of right now. Uh, I'll definitely say that for sure. And well, last unit, Summer Luca. Uh, it's a four-star axe light unit. First ability, floaty spin, deals light damage to enemies in line. Kind of a standard, like, you know, four, three-star ability. Not very special. Uh, second, ability, second ability, summer spirit, increases the user energy level by one stage and attack rate by 20% for 10 seconds. That's actually not too bad. But the only downside of it is that it only applies to just summer Luka alone. It doesn't affect the whole team. So it's not nearly as good as you would like it to be. But it's not too bad. If you're running on a budget, like a budget uh, team build, it's not a bad. It's not a bad ability to have. Uh, and then it lists. Then it lists the standard energy level stuff. Co ability, defense plus fifty percent, kind of standard. Uh, Pass abilities, HP seventy percent equals strength plus ten percent. Again, kind of standard. It's not bad, but it's not great either. Uh, curse resistance plus one hundred percent, kind of standard. Extra energy one grants a 40% chance that a user's energy level will increase by an additional stage upon being increased. That's honestly not too bad. To be honest, that's probably his best ability out of his entire get, to be honest, um, is the extra energy one. But overall, Summer Luca is not is not fantastic, but he's he's slightly above average in my opinion. Um yeah, that's probably the best way to play it. Just slightly above average for a four-star unit, but nothing crazy. Uh, out of all the units, though, uh, Popstar Siren is by far an S-tier dragon. 
So if you happen to get her, I highly recommend a user uh, instead of whatever it is you're using. Uh, let's see. And then Summer Cleo is also a very good unit. Uh, kind of niche, just because of the fact it relies on the opponent being paralyzed. So you need to make sure before you jump into a quest, uh, make sure that the enemy can actually be paralyzed first before you start using her. Um, otherwise, you're just going to end up detrimenting your, your team build. Um, and then last but not least, uh, some of Erica is honestly kind of a disappointment. She's not nearly as good compared to some of the other healers out there, um, including some of the four star healers as well. But other than that, I would love to hear what you guys thoughts and opinions are in the comment section down below about the new units and the event. I'm actually really enjoying the event as of right now. I'm about like slightly more than halfway done already. I would say maybe like around 60, 70 percent done uh, so far. But other than that, if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, subscribe, and hit that bell button. It's the best way I know when I upload more videos such as this one. My name is Brian from KX Nation, and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace, guys.